I interviewed um, Dr. Alyssa Eppel on the podcast. She works closely with um, Dr. Elizabeth Blackburn. Yes. Um, she's at UCSF. And um, she has published some studies showing that like stress plays a, a big role in, in um, I mean, big role. It plays a pretty good role in telomere biology. So yes. you can find that like different types of stress can actually affect telomere length. Yes. So lifestyle factors that affect the epigenetic clocks. So for example, diet, yes. exercise, smoking, um, or even you know, education. Education, <laughs> education, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do those lifestyle factors in general affect epigenetic aging? Yeah, they, everything your grandmother ever told you about living a healthy lifestyle um, is kind of corroborated by our epigenetic clocks, you know. So for example, people who eat vegetables, people who exercise, um, also actually educational level, you know, um, um, uh, to some extent even alcohol consumption, you know, um, um, show a beneficial effect. Now, the problem is these effects are weak, you know. Um, again, you need a couple of thousand people, then you pick it up. Um, in terms of statistical significance, there's no debate. These are, um, um, yeah, uh, clearly these associations are there. But for the individual, the question is, um, what if I follow the perfect lifestyle? Do I make a big dent on epigenetic aging? You know, and the answer is um, unfortunately not really. You know, and um, I mean I'm as much of a health nut as many other people in Southern California. You know, so I'm trying to have a healthy lifestyle. But um, so yes, it avo you want to avoid diabetes and all of that. You know, and certainly you don't want to smoke. You know, but um, the truth is. Um, a lifestyle intervention will never have a profound impact on um, on aging at a population level, you know. Because what I would like to do is I would like to increase health span by 10, 15 years, you know. And I, in my opinion, lifestyle interventions won't get us there, you know. In in healthy people, okay. <laughs> so. Um, so let's say you have a friend who smokes and is obese, then yes, tell your friend to um, adopt a healthier lifestyle because for this person it will have a huge effect. But let's say you take um, somebody like me who is uh, reasonably slender, doesn't smoke. And now you tell me, what about if you become a vegetarian, you know, or what if you double the amount of exercise you do? Will you um, have a strong effect on uh, my lifespan? And the answer is no, not really. You know. According mm. to the epigenetic. According clocks. to the epigenetic clocks. Yeah. So mm -hmm. your, the physical activity mm -hmm. was only like a week. Yeah, so um, physical activity. Yeah, is, uh, exactly. Unfortunately, weak. So I want to say correlation 0 0.08 for people who, who know what that means. That's a very weak correlation in blood though right. so because the question is maybe if we studied um, heart tissue muscle. Or, or muscle maybe that we would find a much more uh, a much more pronounced effect you know but right at least in blood we didn't see it yeah. well mm. that sort of brings mm. the question about tissue types too as well i mean mm. you know yeah example is um, the effect of obesity um, on epigenetic aging turns out um, obese people age faster in blood. However, the strongest effect can be found in liver tissue. Uh, so obesity greatly accelerates the epigenetic age of liver tissue, you know. And so I think a lot of stress factors really have an organ-specific effect. Uh, conversely, anti-aging interventions also have an organ-specific effect. Um, so for example, um, when we evaluated the effect of um, postmenopausal hormone therapy in women, we found no beneficial effect in blood. However, interestingly, the buccal epithelial cells, so the cells inside uh, of your mouth, they actually revealed that women who took hormone therapy were aging more slowly in these cells. You know. Oh, interesting. Y yes. Mm -hmm. Many cell types are also epithelial cells. I mean, many of your organs have yes, epithelial yes, cells. Yes. Blood, blood cells are a little different. I mean, yeah. And so no, the finding made sense because blood cells don't have as many estrogen receptors as buccal epithelial cells. Oh, really? so, so yes, obviously if you have a hormone intervention, you want to study cells that are susceptible to it, you know.